Hello Saints, let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today I'm going to share with you two readings from St. John of the Cross, who was a Spanish mystic, a Carmelite, and whose name I took at my confirmation when I joined the church. Now he was named so, St. John of the Cross, because he sought the cross of Christ in everything that he did whether it was his sufferings, to add his sufferings to the sufferings of Christ, or even in the delightful things, even in the things that may have brought him joy, he sought suffering, he sought the cross of Christ. So let's read the poem, and we'll talk a little bit about that. The Dark Night, Songs of the Soul, which rejoices at having reached that lofty state of perfection, union with God by the way of spiritual negation. Once in the dark of night, when love burned bright with yearning, I arose, O windfall of delight, and how I left none knows, dead to the world, my house in deep repose. In the dark, where all goes right, Thanks to a secret ladder, other clothes, O oh, windfall of delight, in the dark, enwrapped in those, dead to the world, my house in deep repose. There in the lucky dark, none to observe me, darkness far and wide, no sign for me to mark, no other light, no guide except for my heart, the fire, the fire inside. That led me on, true as the very noon is, truer too, to where there waited one I knew, how well I knew, in a place where no one was in view. O oh, dark of night, my guide, night dearer than anything all your dawns discover, O oh, night drawing side to side the loved and the lover, she that the lover loves, lost in the lover. Upon my flowering breast, kept for his pleasure garden, his alone, the lover was sunk in rest. I cherished him, my own, there in air from plumes of the cedar blown. In air from the castle wall, as my hand in his hair moved lovingly at play, he let cool fingers fall, and the fire there where they lay, all senses in oblivion drift away. I stayed, not minding me, my forehead on the lover I reclined. Earth ending, I went free, left all my care behind among the lilies falling and out of mind. Now I'm going to try to read it in Spanish as well, because he was a Spanish mystic. And, um... It's written in 16th century Spanish, so you'll have to bear with me a little bit as we try. Canciones de de el alma que se goza de haber llegado al alto estado de la perfección que es la unión con Dios por el camino de la negación espiritual de el mismo autor. En una noche obscura con ansias en amores inflamada o oh, dichosa ventura, salí sin ser notada estando ya mi casa sosegada. A escuras y segura por la secreta escala disfrazada o oh, dichosa ventura, a escuras y encelada, estando ya mi casa sosegada. En la noche dichosa, en secreto que nadie me vea, Ni yo miraba cosa sin otra luz y guía, sino la que en la corazón ardía. Acuesta mi guiaba, más cierto que la luz del mediodía, a donde me esperaba, quien yo bien me sabía, en parte donde nadie parecía. O oh noche que guiaste, o oh noche amable, Mas que el alborada, o noche que juntaste amado con amada, 
amada en el amado transformada, en mi pecho florido, que entero para él solo se guardaba, allí quedó dormido, y yo le regalaba, el, y el vintalle de cedros haré daba, el haré de la almena, cuando yo sus cabellos esparcía, con su mano serena en mi cuello hería, y todos mis sentidos suspendía. Quédeme y obídeme, el rostro recline sobre el amado, cesó todo, y déjeme dejando mi cuidado entre las azucenas olvidado. So, for St. John of the Cross, um, this darkness and this suffering was not merely that, not merely suffering. And seeking the cross of Christ and seeking that suffering was a way for him to enter into a darkness that would allow him to escape from his attachments um, and into the arms of God, into the arms of his lover, his love, who would take care of him and who demanded at times that their meeting be through this darkness, through this suffering. And in doing so, um, his attachments were annihilated. Um, he was able to lose himself and think only of God. So this last reading is from Book 2, Chapter 7 of the Ascent of Mount Carmel. And for the Carmelites, Mount Carmel uh, represented this long journey uphill the whole way, um, and which likely would demand that you abandon things so that you don't lose uh, yourself falling sort of down the mountain, right? Um, and at the summit was the union uh, of the soul with God himself. So, a genuine spirit seeks rather the distasteful in God than the delectable, leans more toward suffering than toward consolation, more toward going without everything for God than toward possession, and toward dryness and affliction than toward sweet consolation. It knows that this is the significance of following Christ and denying self that the other method is perhaps a seeking of self in God, something entirely contrary to love. Seeking oneself in God is the same as looking for the caresses and consolations of God. Seeking God in oneself entails not only the, des the desire to do without these consolations for God's sake, but also the inclination to choose for love of Christ all that is most distasteful, whether in God or in the world. And this is what loving God means. Let us pray. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. St. John of the Cross, pray for us. St. Bernard, pray for us. St. Benedict, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.